Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. There's so many things that we don't know the answers to. And we can come to the point where we just say, you know what, God, I trust you. I don't have all the answers, but I trust you. I would love to see a bunch of people today, not only here, but perhaps watching by television. You've had something really tragic or hard or difficult or unfair happen to you. And you're stuck. <laughs> you're stuck in that place. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Could somebody say to God today, you know what? I don't understand, but it's okay. <laughs> I give it to you. I leave it with you. Explain it to me if you ever want to, but if you never do, I love you anyway. I'm so weary of watching people just confuse themselves to no end, trying to figure all these things out. Well, is God sovereign or isn't he sovereign? What was that the devil or was, you know, well, are we predestined? We're not predestined. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if you're just wanting to learn and grow in God and you're approaching some of those subjects from that standpoint, then that's fine, learn all you want to. But let me tell you something, the minute you start to get confused, you need to go, whoa. Because confusion is not from God. Yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You can ponder things as long as you want to, but when you start getting confused, you need to drop it like a hot potato and walk off. You know, I feel that there's some freedom coming for some people here today. I really do sense that. I think there's some people today that, man, this is going, this is, this is it. This is, oh, the devil's not happy. Because he wants to hurt us and then keep us in that the rest of our lives. Can you imagine how my life could have turned out, how your life could have turned out if you would have just remained bitter? Thank God for his word. That we can overcome evil with good and even when we don't understand and it hurts so bad we can't hardly stand it, we can still say, I know that my Redeemer lives. Here's the thing. I know that God loves us enough that no matter what comes into our life, he will work it out for good. He's got a good plan and it will work out for good. It's time for some of you, I'll tell you, you got a destiny that's got a gold star on it. And it's time for you to get about God's business and stop messing around in the devil's camp, making him happy every day. Lord, help me do this right. <laughs> I won't ask you why. Tell me if you want to, but I'm not straying, staying in that crazy camp of, well, why, did, why didn't I get that promotion? Why did she get it? She didn't deserve it. Why didn't I get it? Why didn't I get invited to the party? Why did he get healed and I'm still sick? <laughs> you know what, you're an individual. And God's got an individual, amazingly great plan for your life. There are mysteries that God reveals to us, but there's other things that we will never understand until we get to heaven, and I'm okay with that. I mean, I really am okay, because I just believe if God wants me to know, he'll tell me. I'm not gonna drive myself crazy trying to figure stuff out that there's no answers to. God's ways are deep, 
untraceable, and the Bible says in Romans 11, past finding out. <laughs> Romans 11, 33. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unfathomable, inscrutable, unsearchable are his judgments, his decisions, and how untraceable, mysterious, undiscoverable are his ways, his methods and his paths. Let's just focus on being stable when we have problems. In Hebrews 12, it says that we will have times of shakings in our life, and that we will go through times where everything that can be shaken will be shaken until only that which cannot be shaken remains. <laughs> And you know what will remain when everything that can be shaken is shaken? God will remain. God will remain. I love the story in Daniel about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Love that story. It's so good. How the wicked king said, if you don't bow down, you're going to go in the fiery furnace. And they said, well, know this, O king. If our God can deliver us, it is well. But if not, we will not bow down to you. Yeah. Amen. And I, don't, I, I do not for one minute think that they doubted whether God had the ability to deliver them. We know that God can do anything he wants to do. Yeah. Amen. And if there's ever any fault anywhere, it's certainly not God, it's with us. But I'm okay even with that. <laughs> I'm not mad at myself because I'm not perfect. I get up every day and do the best I can, and God knew what he was getting when he got me. And I'm growing every day, and so are you. Stop wasting your life being mad at your enemies, mad at yourself, mad at God, mad at the devil. Get glad and get over being mad. There's so many things that we don't know the answers to, and we can come to the point where we just say, you know what, God, I trust you. I don't have all the answers, but I trust you. It's so much better to say, help me do this right, instead of saying, why is this happening? Know this, O king, if our God chooses to deliver us, he will. But if not, we are not bowing down to you. We are not bowing down to you. We need more Christians today that will not compromise. Listen, if you have to do something dishonest to keep your job, then you need to just get out of that place and trust God to give you another job. Don't compromise your integrity. Don't compromise your morals. You stand up and say, I am a Christian, and I don't believe that that is right, and I'm sorry, but I cannot do it. And I can promise you, if you take a step of faith like that because of your relationship with God, he will come up with something much better than what you lost. Matter of fact, I would venture to say that sometimes those things are tests to see if we're actually ready for that promotion we're asking God for. <laughs> How many of you have been asking God to do more in your life? Well, guess what? You're likely to have to pass a test. <laughs> Maybe not so much. Okay. Come on, 1 Peter 4 says, don't be amazed at these fiery ordeals that are taking place to test your quality. Don't act like something strange and unusual is happening to you. Even a child being promoted from sixth grade to seventh grade is going to take some final exams. Nobody knows what they know until it's put to the test. Nobody knows what they would do 
Oh, yes, praise God. I trust God. I've got all my trust in God. <laughs> I think sometimes we don't realize when we compromise our integrity what we're giving up concerning our future. If you want to be promoted, God's got to know that he can trust you. Amen? Amen? And how are we ever going to know that? I mean, even in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he told the Israelites, I led you all this way to humble you, to prove you, to see if you would keep my commandments or not. He led them in the wilderness. There was a shorter route for them to get to the promised land. But the Bible says that God led them the long, hard way on purpose. <laughs> to humble them, to prove them, to see if he would keep, they would keep his commandments or not. Then he said that I might bring you into a land that flows with milk and honey and every good thing that you can imagine. So when we go through difficult times and we're tested, God's end goal is always promotion. It's always promotion. And I'm just encouraging you today, if you're going through something difficult, you do what you know in your heart is right, and you will be promoted by God at the right time. How encouraging is that? Galatians 6, 9, be not weary in well-doing, in doing what is right. For in due season, at the appointed time, you shall reap if you do not faint, quit, and give up. Amen? Amen? If we put our trust in God and just keep on keeping on, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. boy, it's going to be good. Hallelujah. So good. You know, sometimes we experience opposition through people. The enemy can use people to come against us, to try to discourage us. It's hard sometimes when you really need encouragement and all you get is discouragement. It's hard sometimes when you feel like that you're taking a step of faith to do what you really believe that God is asking you to do and everybody tells you that you shouldn't be doing it. It can be a real time of confusion. Well, am I hearing from God or not? I tell you, I'd rather follow God and find out, follow what I believe is God and find out I'm wrong than to follow people and never know if I was right or wrong. Matthew 10, 17 says, be on guard against men whose way or nature is to act in opposition to God. For they will deliver you up to councils and flog you in their synagogues. We need to be careful about getting involved with ungodly people. Hello? Yeah. Psalm 1 says, don't take advice from the ungodly. Evil spirits can oppose us. We've talked a little bit about the devil this weekend. I know a lot of people aren't real fond of doing that, but I would be remiss in my job for God if I let you just live in the fantasy world of thinking that the devil's not real. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. In Daniel chapter 10, there was something that Daniel was praying about. He needed understanding in something. And if you read the account, I'm not going to read it all the way through. But the way the story goes is God sent an angel with the answer, and that angel experienced opposition from other evil forces that were in the atmosphere between heaven and earth. <laughs> Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. <laughs> He gets out there in the atmosphere and you can't see him with your eyes, but you can feel his influence. This is where we need discernment. This is where we need to be on our guard and we need to be sharp to just say, you know, I, I, I don't know what, something's just not right here. I, 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 I don't even try to figure out what it is if God's not telling you, because sometimes you get to judging things that you don't have right. But just, hey, if you don't feel right about it, 
If it's not peaceful, if you feel like something's off, then just go in another direction. Yeah. Amen. To be honest, the first time I went in a meeting like this, which has been almost 40 years ago, I mean, coming straight out of a denominational church, walking into a meeting where people are shouting and yelling and raising their hands and clapping and jumping up and down. I mean, I thought I jumped off into the loony bin. <laughs> and maybe you watched me on television, thought you'd come over here today to see what I look like in person. I don't, you know. Or maybe somebody brought you, maybe, you know, a friend or a relative brought you, and you're just kind of sitting there, just kind of wondering about all this, kind of like, oh. Wasn't that worse? That, that, boy, that, I'm used to singing out of my hymnal. <laughs> and that's good. That's a beautiful thing to do. But thank God he doesn't always do everything the exact same way. Amen? And uh, then you're like, I don't know about that Holy Spirit business either. That sounded kind of weird, just receive. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a little spooky. I didn't, didn't know about that. And then she's been talking about the devil this weekend, and I don't like that either. <laughs> but here's the thing, you know, what... The first meeting that I was in like that, you know, part of me was offended, but there was another part of me, the spiritual part of me, I knew that it was right. I knew there was something there because my flesh was having a hard time with it, but my spirit was excited. And so this, this is the way discernment operates. Amen? Amen? We can't just, I, I hate it when you ask somebody a question, they say, well, you know, off the top of my head, that's the last place I want information from. <laughs> Please don't tell me anything off the top of your head. I've already got everything that's on the top, the middle, and the bottom of mine. I need something a little deeper. <laughs> Let's go deeper. Amen? So there was demons in the atmosphere that kept the angel from getting through with the answer. So a stronger angel named Michael who is one of the archangels, which means he's of a higher order of angels, he was sent and they defeated the principalities and powers over that region and the answer came through to Daniel. Now, the whole time Daniel's on earth fasting and praying, not having any idea why he's not getting his answer. Come on. Come on. Sometimes the only answer you've got is just keep it up. I said sometimes the only answer you've got is just keep it up. Just keep giving. Keep loving God. Keep worshiping God. Keep being thankful. Keep a good attitude. Keep saying, God, help me do it right. Help me do this right. You say, well, Joyce, I've got a problem, and I just don't know what to do. Well, here's my best advice. <laughs> when you don't know what to do, keep doing what you do know what to do. Some of you have got big problems, but you're here today. That's a victory. And I believe God's given you some answers that's going to help you. Let me tell you something. Above all, no matter what else, God is good. In Galatians 5, 17, it says, for the desires of the flesh are opposed <laughs> to the Holy Spirit. So even our own flesh will oppose what God is leading us to do. 
you know, in my spirit, I may want to get up in the morning and pray and spend time with God, but my flesh says I'd like to stay in bed. <laughs> Maybe in the spirit, I think, I think I'll have some good protein and some vegetables, but my flesh says I'll take cake. <laughs> with ice cream. <laughs> and chocolate sauce. And whipped cream. <laughs> I mean, we have to realize that there is opposition in life. Paul said, every time I want to do something good, I don't seem to be able to do it. The thing I want to do, I can't do. The thing I don't want to do is what I'm always doing. We're in a war. There's, a, there's even a fight going on between your spirit and your flesh. But good news, Paul said in Galatians, Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You don't have to fight with your flesh all the time. Just focus on following the Spirit. And if you focus on following the Spirit, then you'll always end up with God's will for your life. And then lastly, even God sometimes will oppose us. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah. 1 Peter 5, 5, for God sets himself against the proud, the insolent, the overbearing, the disdainful, the presumptuous, the boastful. <laughs> and he opposes, frustrates, and defeats them. But he gives grace to the humble. You know, there were things in my life that I was trying so hard to make happen. Opposition, opposition, opposition. And I was rebuking the devil. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you. Get out of my way. And I found out that some of those things, it wasn't the devil opposing me, it was God, because I was trying to do things I wasn't supposed to be doing, and God wasn't going to let me do them. So you got opposition coming from a lot of different angles, and the best thing to pray is, God, help me do this right. <laughs> Okay, one last little thing I want to say to you. No challenge means no change. <laughs> Actually, my training coach said that to me last week. <laughs> when he handed me something that was heavier than the last time he handed it to me, and I said, you're really kind of joking, right? <laughs> he said, no challenge, no change. And I thought, I'll take that. That'll preach. <laughs> I'm always looking for anything I can get in a message. But you know, honestly and truly, just like you can see your body change as you exercise, or you can see yourself getting smaller as you stop overeating, or whatever the case might be. There's very often a price to pay on this end for the benefit on this end. And here's what we need more of. We need people that are willing to invest something now to have something here. Not people that just want to be comfortable now and they don't care about what happens later on. Later on is going to come. And the best thing for every one of us to do is to let God lead us and guide us according to his individual plan for us. And it's an easy clap and cheer. But if it's not, know that God's got something awesome up his sleeve. And just very first thing you pray is, God, help me do this right. And if you want to tell me why, that's good. But if not, I don't have to know. I trust you anyway. Come on, give God some praise. You know, whatever you're going through, and I'm sure some of you are going through some very difficult things, God has already given you all that you need to make it through in victory. But you need to believe that. If we begin to get this thinking that we're going to be defeated, then our actions will follow that. But if you believe what the Word of God says, I mean, really believe it, 
then you're gonna find that your living follows what you believe. They know what abuse is, they know what trauma is, they know what it is to struggle with identity, they know what it is to face conflict in their lives, they know what it is to struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness. And Joyce's story and her experience is so particularly relevant to them because they understand that, hey, this lady knows my context. I, I, I might not be able to speak her language, I might not be able to understand her country or her, her culture, but she knows my language of pain and abuse and hurt. And her testimony in their lives gives them hope for their own lives. If, if it can happen for that lady, it could happen for me. Being committed is very important. Mobile phones being used by almost everyone on the continent. In fact, there are more mobile phones on the continent of Africa than there are people at the moment. Uh, so this is a really exciting platform and people are accessing the internet, well over 85% of people, uh, through their mobile phones first. So we've got several pages recently that have been opened up in Nigeria, uh, several that have been opened up in Ethiopia, several in uh, uh, Kenya as well, and we're getting exciting responses from that. So it's one way that we can communicate directly to people uh, on a regular basis, but at the same time where there are physical needs, we respond particularly to those through feeding programs and water wells and anti-human trafficking work and skills development programs for young girls that prevent them from being sold into child marriage and secure their education for the rest of high school. I think for me, the thing that really touches my heart is in the midst of all the numbers, because we do, we work with some uh, crazy numbers and I think we get blown away uh, listening to some of the reach of people. Um, I mean, you know, the millions and the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, those figures that come back. Uh, what always catches me off guard a little bit and gets me uh, overwhelmed is when you have those one-on-one -on -one encounters with people and each and every one of them has a unique story, each and every one of them uh, has a unique uh, set of challenges that they've got to overcome, a unique set of pain. Uh, but God's particular love for each individual in each country, in each culture, in each language is what blows me away. the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Fear is everywhere and affects everyone, including me. But with God's help, I've learned how to move forward in the presence of fear and do it afraid. I wrote this book because I want you to experience the peace that Jesus died to give you. In these pages, you'll learn how to understand and confront fear and change your mindset for lasting freedom. If you open your heart to God, He'll help you embrace courage in the face of fear. 
Ontdek hoe je vooruit kunt gaan in jouw leven. En bestel het boek Doe het, ondanks je angst, van Joyce Meyer. Online via joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.